eyes would just dart back and forth very quickly. She would scream and kick. It seemed like she was possessed. I was scared to death. It was like my legs were on fire. It was the most incredible pain that I've ever felt. I was asking myself, was he going to be able to walk again? Next, two medical mysteries that defied the experts. When 13-month-old Alexa Jennings begins exhibiting a series of bizarre and terrifying symptoms, her parents find themselves on a desperate search for a doctor who can help their only child. We were told we don't know what's wrong with her. That's terrifying to hear as a parent. Then, just hours after incapacitating pain stopped marathon runner Greg Sapp dead in his tracks, a horrifying disease threatens to take over his entire body. If it spread, I would lose the ability to breathe on my own. I just didn't know how to handle it anymore. I was at the point that I thought I could lose my son. In the fall of 2007, Brooks and Becky Jennings had just celebrated their third anniversary and were busy building a life together in Lubbock, Texas. We were a career couple. I worked at a food bank. I was their volunteer coordinator. Brooks was a police officer working midnight shift, so we kind of had opposite schedules there for a while, but we made it work out. We were doing great. We were able to take vacations and, and go places just spur a moment. Life was pretty good. They were happy together. They bought their little starter house and began discussing plans for a family. I always looked forward to the day I would have children. And on January 15th, 2008, Becky calls Brooks when she gets some exciting news. I said, where are you? I know you're on patrol. I'm going to come find you. She jumps out of the truck and I realize she has a plastic bag and there's uh, three pregnancy tests in them and all three of them are positive. We were just thrilled that the time had come. Seven months later, on August 23rd, Brooks and Becky welcome a daughter, Alexa Catherine Grace, into their lives. She weighed six pounds, 10 ounces, and she was just a perfect little baby girl. 10 fingers, 10 toes, good weight. Uh, everything looked great. Over the next year, Alexa always hit those developmental milestones. By October 2009, Alexa could easily take 30 to 40 steps. We loved just chasing her around the house and dancing with her. Alexa was very happy baby, very healthy baby. We had the perfect life. But one morning, when Alexa is 13 months old, Becky notices her seemingly healthy daughter behaving very strangely. I went into the kitchen to rinse out her bottle and I expected her to follow me. I look and she's standing at the couch and she keeps trying to take steps towards me and she keeps falling down. And I watched her do it probably five or six times before she gave up and started crawling towards me and just gave me this look like, Mommy, please come help me. I found it very unusual because just the night before, she had followed me down the hall to go to bed. Becky gives Alexa a bottle, hoping her daughter is just having an off day. But just 30 minutes later, her condition only seems to get worse. She threw up her bottle. It wasn't just like a little bit spit up. I mean, she projectile vomited her entire bottle. We had such little experience with Alexa being sick that I didn't know what to think. Assuming Alexa's just tired, Becky puts her down for a nap. But an hour later, when the baby wakes up, the young mother is stunned by what she sees. Every couple seconds, her eyes would just dart back and forth very quickly and then stop and settle down. It really looked like I was watching something out of a horror movie. 
Frantic, Becky rushes Alexa to the closest ER, calling Brooks on the way. And once the medical team takes over, the Jennings watch helplessly, hoping for some answers. Based on the bizarre symptoms Alexa was exhibiting, the very first thing they wanted to do was put her in a CT scan and rule out any sort of brain tumor. It was a terrifying feeling just to go from no problems at home to emergency room to a looking for any kind of tumor. An hour later, doctors returned with the results of the CT scan. Her brain looked to be normal. There wasn't any kind of tumor at all. It was a prayer answered, of course, but then it began a, a series of further questions. Okay, well, now what's going on? The symptoms were still presenting themselves. So we moved up to pediatric ICU for more and more testing. We had had a CT scan, we had had MRIs, blood work, urine tests, pretty much every test I could think of. All the tests were coming back negative. Doctors were having trouble determining what was going on. We were told, you're the mystery patient. We don't know what's wrong with her. That's terrifying to hear as a parent. But as the Jennings begin to wonder how much more Alexa can take, her bizarre symptoms begin to mysteriously improve. Her eye movement slowed down a little bit. She started to get better with the balance as well. We were happy. Alexa was doing better, but uh, we still didn't have an answer for exactly what was going on either. With all their tests showing nothing but negative results, the medical team is left with only one possible diagnosis. Alexa's doctors felt that she could have a viral infection causing cerebellar ataxia. Cerebellar ataxia is the sudden onset of uncoordinated muscle movement. It's often caused by a virus of unknown origin that affects the part of the brain responsible for coordinating balance and eye movements. Our doctor told us upon leaving that she would recover over the next four to six weeks and get back to how she was before the virus. All of her vital signs appeared to be perfectly normal. We were released from the hospital. So we went on home and she continued to improve. I even got back to the point of taking five, seven steps uh, without falling. The eye movements probably slowed down to about 10 minutes in between on average. We honestly thought, this is it, this is what she has, she'll continue to get better, and our lives will go on as if it never happened. But just two weeks after leaving the hospital, Alexa suddenly takes a horrifying turn for the worse. Her eye movements really picked up. They would just go insane in all directions, and we noticed the balance was getting much worse. She was having such a difficult time even sitting up. It terrified me that the same symptoms that we started with were now back with a vengeance. Before the worried parents have a chance to react, Alexa is blindsided by a frightening new symptom. We put her into her high chair and we noticed her extremities, her arms and legs started moving uncontrollably. It was almost like somebody who had Parkinson's disease. It was just different than anything we had seen up to this point. I was scared to death. Soon after she begins walking on her own, 13-month-old Alexa Jennings suddenly loses all sense of balance and starts experiencing bizarre, uncontrollable eye movements. While her doctors suspect a virus triggered the frightening symptoms, Alexa's parents aren't so sure, especially when her entire body begins shaking violently. Horrified, Brooks and Becky Jennings are rushing their only child to the ER yet again. We were immediately admitted back into the pediatric ICU, and the doctor was beginning to think that maybe this wasn't a viral infection after all, and it could potentially be something else. Alexa was in the hospital overnight. 
We did lots of blood work as well as a lumbar puncture to take a look at the spinal fluid and see if there was anything unusual in that. In the morning, the findings are in, and the Jennings are completely taken aback by what they reveal. All of her testing came back normal. And the neurologist finally told us, we, we just don't know what's wrong. It was terrifying, and it felt like we were back at the beginning again. She was still showing all of her symptoms, uh, the eye movement, the body shaking, the loss of balance. There's something clearly wrong with Alexa, but nobody just knows what it is. At a complete loss, the medical team discharges Alexa and refers the case to a new pediatric neurologist. But Becky and Brooke's hopes for an answer anytime soon are quickly dashed. We could not get an appointment for three weeks. She was still having serious balance issues to the point that she could not sit up. Her eye movements at times were so uncontrollable they never stopped. She was also having horrible shaking and I sat there and I thought, three weeks from now, is she even gonna be here? Over the next two days, the Jennings try repeatedly to get an earlier appointment, but with no success. And to make matters worse, Alexa seems to be undergoing a strange emotional change. Alexa began to develop incredibly violent rage fits. Tried to pull herself out of the high chair, screaming like you were stabbing her with knives. She would try with so much force to get out. I was afraid she was going to physically hurt herself. She would scream and kick. It seemed like she was possessed. We were reaching a hopeless point where we didn't know how much worse she could get. My wife and I were consumed with looking for an answer on the internet, talking to friends, talking to family, uh, looking for any possible resource that we could to help find an answer for Alexa. And the intensive research pays off when the family finds a world-class pediatric neurology department 500 miles away in Houston. Houston, Texas Children's Hospital was the place to go. We called and uh, we were told that we needed to be seen immediately. We were losing time. Eager to help his ailing granddaughter, Mike joins Becky and Brooks for what turns out to be a terrifying journey. Alexa spent the entire ride from Lubbock to Houston screaming, crying, literally trying to break out of the car seat. It was as if something was attacking her. My worst fear at that point was she was at a point of no reversal, and that would be the end. Ten long hours later, the family arrives at the Texas Children's Hospital emergency room, where they're met by a team of pediatric neurologists headed by Dr. Angus Wilfong. When I first walked in the room, you could see it on her parents' faces, and you could see it on Alexa's face. This was a very sick little girl. She was completely unable to coordinate her arms and her legs. She had very, very bad shaking. Her eye movements were almost nonstop. It looked like her eyes and body were dancing uncontrollably, and there were only a very few conditions that would produce those kinds of movements and it really confirmed what we thought might be wrong with, with Alexa. We were so incredibly desperate to have a name of what was wrong. We couldn't continue to still sit there in the dark and wonder. With the sudden appearance of these symptoms that got progressively worse over the course of a month, this really 